In the last theorem 9, call it tangent chord theorem. It says the angle between a tangent and a chord. There. Here's a chord and there's a tangent. All right. So we're talking about an angle between a tangent and a chord. That means T1 here. It's between a tangent and a chord. An angle between a tangent and a chord through the point of contact, our point of contact is T in this case, is equals to the angle suspended by the chord in the alternate segment. So the angle suspended by this same chord PT is C there. There. Okay. So that means we have to prove that angle T1 is equals to angle C. That is what that statement means. In short, we just call it tangent chord theorem. Let's prove. All right, prove. Okay, we first redraw the whole thing. Obviously, we're going to have a construction. So construct, what are we constructing in this case? case? We first going to construct a diameter construct okay we create center you will call our center o we're going to create point at the circumference then let's name this point a d all right so our diameter will be t o okay we are constructing so i need a dotted line sorry a solid line T O D. So we are constructing diameter dia uh, oh that's an ugly A diameter. It's so hard to write with an electronic pen. Diameter T O D. All right, and then we also join line DC, DC. Okay, so we're going to have one. We will have two here. We will have one, one, and two here. All right, let's start. What do we know so far we know that angle t1 and t2 are equals to 90 degrees okay we know that angle t1 plus angle t2 equals to 90 degrees what's the reason theorem seven that was that the tangent is perpendicular to radius the reason is that we know it's theorem seven which said tangent is perpendicular to radius okay i would say red perfect okay another thing that we know is that c2 is equals to t2 those are the angles on the same segment notice that both are suspended by pd and they are on the same segment so we know that angle c2 is equals to angle t2 angle t2 these are angles on the same segment. Okay, our reason angles on same segment. Angles on same segment. So that is a second theorem that we've used. I think this was theorem three, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Don't remember segment don't forget your reasons very important that statement 
is not valid without that reason you will not get your mark all right and then also another thing that we know is that c1 plus c2 equals true 90 degrees angle c1 plus angle c2 equals true 90 degrees what is the reason there those that angle c1 c2 suspended by the diameter diameter o um t o d we know angle suspended by diameter equals true 90 what would be the reason in short we just say angle on semicircle in semicircle suspended by diameter semicircle just check out how i <clears throat> abbreviate the reasons okay they are acceptable semicircle it's just that this pen makes it so hard to write angle in semicircle all right so how does this help us let's check t1 from this statement because we're trying to prove that t1 is equals to angle c1 okay that will be our c1 then angle c1 okay let's make t1 subject of the formula t1 angle t1 is equals to 90 minus we take in t2 90 minus t angle t2 but notice that we had said t2 is equals to c2 so we're going to substitute that so that means t1 is then 90 degrees minus we substitute t2 by c2 okay minus angle c2 and if you notice if we try to make c1 subject of the formula form here we are going to get that um c1 is equals to 90 and then if c2 goes to the other side it's going to be minus c2 goes to the other side then it's 90 minus c2 yay so we've proved that c1 is 90 minus c2 t2 and then t1 is 90 minus c2 both of them are equals to the same thing therefore t1 is equals to angle c1 that is the last theorem to prove in short if you were to use it on the exercises we're going to just call it a tangent chord theorem remember you have to know how to prove all these seven theorems in an examination you will get two to prove all right and then they will count about 10 to 12 marks that's a lot all right so there are still two more theorems that you need to learn how to prove that is on similarity as well as congruency but for for the circle geometry this is how far we go Please know these theorems, understand them. We're going to apply them with exercises later.